Well, back yeah. then, it, it, people wasn't saying, uh, this is a new thing, rock and roll, because I think what brought that to focus was the fact that Elvis did it. He was the only white boy at that time that had the guts to do what he felt. The movements, you know, a lot of folk don't realize that this man caught pure hell doing the kind of music that he was doing. They broke his records on the air. You know, they called his music uh, racial and, and, and they call him the N-word lover, you know, and all of that and what have you. But I have to give credit what credit is due. He and Sam Phillip, Sam Phillip, they, that was like taboo in a sense back in, in that time for a Southern white man to um, represent this kind of music. So they gave Sam hell too. But he stayed steadfast to what he felt and what he wanted to do. And finally, all of a sudden, then he became a hero, just like Elvis did, you know. But they treated him extreme. They treated him bad. And I think if you uh, probably have already checked the history of uh, his early part of his early, early part of his career, and you saw where he was on uh, the Ed Sullivan show and how they wouldn't let the camera go any further than up here, you know. And they started calling him Elvis the Pelvis because, you know, and they got old clock now that does that. <laughs> well, see, back then, you know, the, the, the whites were telling their kids no. And before Elvis, when Little Richard and all of these other guys, Fats Domino, um, Chuck Willis, Sam Cooke, you know, James Brown, the, they didn't want them to listen to this kind of music. You know, it's just black music, you know, racial stuff. The music that, that he was doing, whites wanted it, but they wanted a white man to do it. And he had Elvis. Elvis was the one with the guts to do it. So Sam sort of put all of the black stuff pushed it out the door, put it on the back burner, and then finally just let it go.